Hello, hello, hello. Um, I, I have often said that I will, I will go anywhere I need to go to be around this material, and I do believe that I have proved it <laughs> with, with, with this trip. It was not easy, but, but we're all here at the appointed time, so that's good. Uh, and I've got, I've got just a, a lovely number of people ready to show me stuff. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to make some, some general comments about uh, the audition process, generally speaking, classical monologues uh, in particular. But I don't want to turn this into a lecture. That's, that's coming. OK, the, yeah, the, 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 the talk part is coming. So what I'd like to do is I have a lot of things that I want to get into the conversation, but I think it'll be better if I'm able to do that in the context of working with, with the actors. I'll see things that will enable me to import some of those thoughts that I have. But I do want to say at the outset, now, you know, those of you who've been around this, uh, this game for any length of time, you know that, that audition is a very particular kind of performance. It's different. It's different than rehearsing and performing a show. And you better be proficient at it because I have known, and I'm sure many of you have observed, actors who are really good in the rehearsal room and in the context of a you know, four week rehearsal period, they'll, they'll deliver a performance, but they don't audition particularly well. This is a problem, as you can understand. You, know, you, you must do this thing in order to get the opportunity to do the other thing. The other side of the coin is in many ways even worse. And, and this is something I had to learn over the years as a director. There are actors who will come in and wow you at audition, and then you get into the rehearsal room and you realize that was it. <laughs> That's it. They're going to do the same thing, and it won't matter what you say to them. They'll, they'll do it again. You know, you can eat. So be prepared. I, when I audition actors, given my druthers, I will always ask for prepared material. I want to see you come in with the thing that you think shows you off to best advantage. I want to see the piece that you looked for, discovered, chose, chose, worked on, and, and look, in the, in the best of all possible worlds, these things need to be in the hopper for some period of time, yeah? You should always, always, always be reading dramatic literature and collecting potential audition pieces. Not, not the one you're going to show them next week, the one you're going to show them four months down the road after you've had a chance to let it steep. Okay, now, now don't, don't be alarmed for people who are going to perform a piece this evening that they've just learned. Don't worry about that. This is just stuff to file away for future use. These things need time. Because, because why? Because you don't want to be in the audition space and in process playing the intention of, what's my next line, right? We, we, you don't want to be questing about for what you're going to say or do next. You need to be alive in the moment so you can go back and forth with the energy of the room, whatever that happens to be, okay? Yeah, so here, here's how I learned it. Any actor who is going to put him or herself into the audition context, <clears throat> at a minimum, at a bare minimum, you should always be walking around with four performable monologues. Two classical, two contemporary, dramatic, comedic. That's your basic four. Then you can start going out to the margins and coming up with the unexpected piece, right? The piece that may be age or gender inappropriate. The, the stuff that just, you know, that resonates for you for some odd reason, doesn't matter. But you've got your basic four. And then you, then you can go further afield because, because in audition, you always, well, listen, within bounds of reason, you want to be the actor who can answer yes. So you show your auditors a piece, and they say, well, that's very nice. Do you have something that's more like blah, 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 blah? You want to be able to say yes. You know, if you have to answer uh, not really, oops, oops. So, you know, be, be prepared. So 
getting back to my preferences as an auditor, I like people to come in with prepared material. Show me that piece, but guess what? You're good. I don't care how great your initial performance was, is, guess what's coming next? The adjustment. This is how I avoid that, that second classification of actor, the one that doesn't develop in rehearsal. Because you're gonna come in, you're gonna show me whatever you show me, and I'm gonna say, that's great, thank you. Try it again, but this time, blah, 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 blah. I never know what I'm going to say, but it's going to be something that is completely different from what you came in with, because I have to see if you can think on your feet, A. And B, I have to see whether you and I have any kind of simpatico. Do you respond to my verbal cues? I have to know that if I give you something in rehearsal, you will manifest it for me, yeah? You will show me something based on what I asked for. Whether I like it or not, that's, that's the, hardly the point. We have to be able to have that kind of a dialogue. That, that reminds me of a story. Did I, did I tell my, uh, my, my King Lear story last time I was here? It's a long time ago. Did I ever tell you that story? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, it's, it's a good story. I mean, I'm, I'm at that age, I, I repeat myself. So here, here's what I mean about being able to translate prompts into sound and movement, which is really what actors are, are working with for the most part. I was in the production of King Lear in, uh, in San Diego. Hal Holbrook played Lear in this production. He was, he was a marvel, he was a force of nature. I was in the ensemble. I mean, basically, anytime a heavy prop came on stage, I was holding part of it, right? Now, there's a scene in that play where uh, Edgar, who is the, the good son of Gloucester, he has to disguise himself because his brother set him up. Edmund, the bastard, has set him up. And Edgar has to, has to find a way to disguise himself or else he's gonna be taken and, and murdered, killed. So there's a scene where he transforms himself into poor Tom, the bedlam beggar. We know this scene, right? I'll elf all my hair in knots, blah, 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 blah. And there's actually, there's actually something in the scene which is really cool, which our director actually staged. He actually says that he's gonna take a sprig, like a, you know, a, a piece of a, a branch or something, and stick it through his skin, because that's one of the ways that the beggars impress upon the common people, look how, look how desperate I am. Please give me, give me money. See, I'm, I'm, I'm actually wounding myself. Those of us who were in the ensemble were in this scene with poor Tom. Poor Tom was on top of this gigantic boulder that was in the middle of our set. And there was dry ice fog covering the stage floor and we were all down in the fog. So, you know, what, as, the, as the scene commenced, you would hear us down there moaning in agony. You couldn't see us. And then you would see like hands and arms coming up out of the fog. It was a pretty cool effect. And after one particular rehearsal, the director called us all together, the ensemble people. And he said, the, the, the soundscape that I'm getting from you all down in the fog, it's not quite right. It's not what I'm looking for. And I swear to you, this is verbatim. He said, what I need is the, and he was looking for the right words. He said, I'm looking for the, the orange cricket flash of pain. And I thought to myself, okay, my first thought was, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. And my second thought was, okay. Okay, if he wants the orange cricket flash of pain, I can do that. I can do that. And by God, the next thing that I did was, to the best of my ability, the orange cricket flash of pain. He'll take it or leave it. Do you know what I mean? He can like it or not. But your job as an actor is to translate. You translate prompts into sound and movement. Okay? All right. Let me see if there's anything basic I want to say before we start working here. Are there any questions about anything I've said thus far? Feel free at any point. Ah. Here's one. When you are asked to do prepared material in audition, you're very often asked for two contrasting monologues, right? Have we been in this situation? Yeah? Okay. 
Uh, a very good teacher of mine once told me, your basic checklist for that kind of an audition, in the course of two contrasting monologues, you should be able to demonstrate that you can be strong, soft, funny, scary, and charming. And charming is your intro. And I'm gonna ask you all to do an intro for your pieces this evening, okay? Strong, soft, funny, scary, and charming. Now, you're all only doing one piece, so you can probably accomplish one, maybe two of those things in that piece, if you think about it. But as you're, as you're collecting audition material and you're putting things together, that's worth thinking about. Uh, length of selections, length of selections. Um, do not be afraid to edit. Again, this is a very particular kind of performance. Your auditors are not expecting you to tell them the story of the play, okay? Particularly with Shakespeare, they probably know it, so don't feel obliged to, you know, to do the entire Queen Mab speech. It's not necessary, right? You get in and get out. I, we, want, we want a coherent whole. We want a beginning, a middle, and an end, but you need not perform, right, the entire aria. Feel free to edit. Feel free to cut and paste. I told a couple of you this in our email correspondence, but I auditioned for years for years with a piece from Twelfth Night that I stitched together, the character of Antonio, who is uh, Sebastian's buddy. I, and I, could, I took bits and pieces from here and there and I cut it all together in a way that, that worked for me. Thing came in at like 40 seconds. It's enough, yeah? If they, if they tell you that you know, you've got four minutes to do two contrasting monologues, your goal is not to come in at 358, right? because heaven forbid you should be the actor that they call time on when you're like a line and a half away from the, you know, the climax of your second piece. Do not be that. Don't be that. I can only tell you, this is just strictly personal with me, but an actor that goes over, I, I cannot imagine a world in which I cast that actor. I don't care how brilliant you were, for the first minute and 58 seconds. If, if at two minutes we gotta call time on you and you're not done, you didn't follow the most basic instruction. So what, what assurance do I have that I can count on you to do what's necessary in rehearsal and performance, right? Okay. Um, be alive in the rehearsal room. We, we talked about that in the audition room, be alive. Be, because I, I can tell you this, sometimes you will go in there and from the auditor's table, you will feel the Arctic chill. They'll give you nothing, nothing, right? You gotta be ready for that. You know, and, and the fact that they're, they're laughing at every you know, joke that you put into your piece, that, that the only feedback that counts in audition is this feedback, right? Don't, don't, fall into the trap, the, the, the mental trap of thinking that the external response to your audition is the determining factor in whether you did a good audition. It's not. It's not. You may just not look like what they thought the, the character looked like. That's, that's fine. That's, you know, that's, that's their consideration. You need to be sure of how you did, whether you did what you were there to do. I went through a period of my life as an auditioning actor where I, was, I, I found it very difficult to be alive in the audition room. Anybody have this experience? You go in and you, and you do the things, and you, you enter and you come to the thing, and you introduce yourself and you perform your piece, and then I would walk out and I'd be standing in the hallway going, what just happened? I mean, I just literally w went out of body for a couple of minutes, which that's no good. That's no good. I, thankfully, I passed through that, do you know? But do what you need to do to be alive in the audition space. It's fair to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions, right? You know, you can ask, like, what, you know, what's your timeline for casting, if that's important to you, I mean, and stuff like that's okay, 
right? They, they want you to have the information that, that you crave. You know what's another good question you can ask? Is it okay if I play to you? Don't ever assume that it's okay to play to your auditor unless you ask. I'll tell you no. I will tell you no. I don't want to be in your scene. That's not why I'm here, okay? And, and if you make me part of your scene, then you've deprived me of the opportunity to be a voyeur, which is what I want to be. I want to observe you in performance. I may need to look at your resume, which, you know, which I'm gonna feel weird about if you're, if you're like, you know, talking to me. Yeah, so if you need to do that, ask. This is, this is one of the reasons why I don't favor uh, soliloquy as audition pieces. I don't like soliloquies as audition pieces because when you think about it, and nothing against soliloquies, they're beautiful in their context, but when you think about it, how do you play soliloquies? You've basically got two choices, right? One is I'm internal, I'm thinking stuff, you know, I'm, I'm working something out between me and me, and the other one is I'm talking to y'all, which is, you know, I mean, Iago. Richard III, that's, you know, the, that's a very important part of these plays. He's talking to the audience. He's saying, hey, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some evil shit. <laughs> Watch me. And then he goes back into the, into the play and does it. Yeah, but much better, much better when you are selecting audition pieces. Find pieces where you, the actor, the character, are working on another character. That's what I wanna see. That's what I wanna see. I want to see you having an agenda relative to that invisible other person that you will establish as being in the space with you, right? Okay, that's, that's enough prefatory stuff. So what I would like you to do, and I'm not, I'm not hung up on any particular order, we can go in any order that you like, I would like you to actually you know, like leave the space on one side or the other, and then on your time, come on in, introduce your piece and play it. This is for you if you want it. If you don't want it, move it out of your way, right? Or if you can play downstage, but that's fine too. But when you go into an audition, you will always have something like this. There'll always be a chair or a block in the space if you want it. If you don't want it, move it. Okay. Who wants to lead off? I pause for an answer. <laughs> yeah, right on, right on. Okay. Choice. What conquests brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome to grace in captive bonds his chariot leaves? Oh, you blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. Knew you not follow me? Many a time and oft have you climbed up walls and battlements, yea, to chimney tops, your infants in your arms, and there have sat the live long day in patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And when his chariot did appear, did you not make a universal shout that the Tiber trembled under her shout when I hear the conquest of her? Tribu ah, here the conquest of her tributaries under her concave shores. And do you now put on your best attire? Do you now cull out a holiday? 
do you now spread flowers in the path of he who comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone! Run to your houses, fall upon your knees, and pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude. Okay, okay, good, all right, all right, good. Okay, um, yeah. I tripped on the thing I added. Yes, you did. <laughs> Rep replications of her sound, uh, sound. okay. Um, so after the intro, what you want is what I'm going to call a moment of neutrality. Yeah, you have to have something that delineates end of intro, and it basically says, when next I appear, I will be performing my piece. Now, some actors turn, I don't mind it. Some act just looking down is fine, but it needs to be like nice and clear, right? So finish your intro, make sure that that is received, and then boom, and you're into it. And I think with this piece, you probably want to be boom into it, as opposed to the first beat, which right now is reading a little bit out of, I don't know what I want to say to these people. Yeah? I argued with myself about in beginning strong and ending strong or choosing What's the first line? Wherefore rejoice. Okay, so I, so I, I try it. We'll, we'll, we'll start again at the top. Try it with the idea that when you, know, when you come out of that moment of neutrality, you've already processed all of that, right? And because the other thing I want to say about it, Mike, is we know where it's going. We know where, you know, like the, the be gone is, is going to a peak there. So everything before that is setting these slobs up, right? Setting them up. You know, they're, they're irritating from the jump, but you have to lure them in with the pompy stuff, right? So what you're, what you're imagining when you spin out the tale of their prior affinity for pompy, you got heads nodding out here. It's like, yeah, we did that. That's right, I, yeah, I did, I, you know, blah, 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 And then you get to take them out at the knees. Right. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's simple enough. Let's, let's start at the top. Let's start at the top, and we'll just go into it uh, a little bit. But let's have that in mind. Let's, um, so, because what, what I'm perceiving here is that I, I feel like I'm getting some of this guy's uh, emotional attachment to, to whatever Pompey was. Let's, let's try taking that out. Let's, let's make the focus of this a little bit more about, um, about um, So this guy's on the, I mean, if Caesar is the focal point for everybody in this play, this guy is on the anti-Caesar side of the ledger. Let's, let's make it more about berating them, putting them in their place for having made that bad, fickle decision. Does that make sense? Okay, let's start again. No, no intro. Rejoice! What conquest springs he hope? What tributaries follow him to Rome to grace it captive bombs his chariot wheels? You blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. Did you not Pompey? Many a time and off have you climbed up walls and battlements, yea, to chimney tops, your infants in your arms, and there have sat the live long day in patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And do you now? And and do you, and do you, are you do and when you saw his chariot but appear, are you doing that part? I well, I, or, or did you I, cut I, it? I had all, I had cut it when we talked about it. I, that's the part that I had cut out. Okay, I think I think it's fine. I do think that you want to, you do want to, and th again, think of it in terms of setup and punchline. So somewhere here, after you get to knew you not Pompey. Ah, ah, you know, you you got their attention. 
you have to find a way to lure them in with you know, their, their fond memories of celebrating Pompey's greatness. Do you know what I mean? So, so all this stuff about, yeah, okay, start with, um, Many a time and oft, are you, are you doing that? Yeah, many, many a time and oft. But so, so uh, again, this, and this is part of solo performance, is assuming the reaction, right? What, what, are, what, are they, what are they, that other person you're talking to, what's he doing, what's she doing? What are they doing? And, and you may wanna have multiple points of focus here. You did it at the top of the first go round. You, had, you put people here and you put people there. That may be useful for you, okay. Um, yeah, but, but let's, let's see you ass assuming the response. Do you know, maybe people are, maybe they're, you've got them feeling a little bit ashamed. That, that's good, that's what, you're, that's what you're after here. Okay, many a time and oft. Do you not come? Many a time and oft have you climbed up walls and battlements. Yea, to chimney tops. Your infants in your arms. And there you've sat the live long day in patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. Murmurs, murmurs of agreement. Do you now put on your best attire? Oh, yeah. Do you now cull out a holiday? Yeah, maybe that's not such a good idea. Do you now spread flowers in the path of he who comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone! Run to your houses! Fall upon your knees and pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude. Okay, good. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I mean, I think I think that's a better shape for it. Is is the is bringing them in so that you can deliver the big blow. Make sense? Okay. Good. Brought back a lot of memories. Rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right, we're off. Who's next? Who's next? Stand not upon the order of your going. All the way out. All the way out. And then come in. Yeah. No sneak previews. Here we go. Mike Negley, I'll be doing Cassius's Colossus monologue from Caesar 42. And man needeth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we, the petty men, walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. As fair a name, sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them, Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. When went there by an age since the great flood, but there was fame with more than with one man? When could they, till now, that talked of Rome, say that her wide walls encompassed but one man? You and I have heard our fathers say there was a Brutus once who would have brought the eternal devil keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. Okay, all right, good, good. Okay, good. All right, so th this is useful. We've got a piece here with two distinct points of focus. All right. Um, Rich is a big fan of 30 degree angles. Put him there. Why, why, why do I say that? Why do I say that? Why, why do I say put Brutus there and not there? Because, so that you can that's right. Because if you put Brutus there, you remain available to me at all times. 
Caesar can be exactly on the, you know, in the, in the same orientation. Okay, that's, that's just a, a cleanup note. Now you're on to some really good stuff here. I think you can amplify it a little bit, which is to say that Caesar, just the thought of Caesar brings stuff out of you that you feel like you have to control. I'm watching you do that. I'm watching you, you know, like kind of tamper that down because you haven't fully enrolled that guy yet. So let's, let's see you do that. Let's see an, an image that I often feel is useful for dramatic monologues is the idea of a speaker who launches into the communication with the idea, I can, I can do this. I'm not emotionally invested in this. I can say what I have to say and not get carried away <laughs> until you do and you have to stuff it back down. Yeah? Okay, so, so you know, you, you may find yourself just going too far with your animus against Caesar and you have to remember, I, I need to bring him in. I need to bring him in. Okay, sure. so let's start at the top again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, and I'm gonna suggest that you that you start start with the person that you're actually speaking to. Right, why, sure. why man, that's that's this guy. Establish it right. Why why man? He and then you can, then you can go to the other point of focus. Astride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs. Yeah, you got a, You got a, You got an image here that you may want to represent a little bit better. I mean, what what, what are we talking about here? This is actually a, a like a, a statue, right? This is a real thing. I mean, the, the, here's the image, right? Yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead and use it. Just you know, this is what Caesar thinks he is, and we're we just walk right. around down here. Yeah, sure. Hi, man. He does bestride the narrow world like a colossus. Yes, and I see. Yeah. Petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men, at some time, are masters of their fate. Good, good. That's, see, that's a good, strong beat for you there. That's a good, strong beat. Beats are good for you. Yeah? I mean, me seeing you go from conclusion of A into beginning of B, that's good for you. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So you can, so what that does is it, it gives you license to light up that thing, which you already started to do, light that thing up and then dial it down to go back to right. Brutus and say, you know what I'm talking about. Right. Let, me, let me make this clear for you. It gives you such a, a variety of vocal dynamics to play with. Okay, so, so start with men at, men at certain times, or whatever that line is. So you've just finished up the Colossus business, and he's down here. Men at some time are masters of their face. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus? And Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together, yours is as fair a name. Sound them. Stay, stay a little bit further upstage. Yeah. That'll, that'll help you place him here. Okay, you're starting to get more into that right. profile thing. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Write them together, yours is as fair a name. Sound them. It doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them. It is as heavy. Conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Work him a little bit. Okay, so from, from this position, from this position, if we imagine Brutus as listening to you from here, take some of this space as you work this stuff. You're saying you're no less than him. Really, your name is as much, your reputation is just as good. Why should he have all the fun and blah, blah, blah? Yeah, right, let, yeah. let's see, it's because you're, you're winning here. Really you're winning, and that gives you license to, you know, to invade his space. You can see, he's, he's like, he's kind of going along for the ride. You can amplify right. that yeah. by, by taking okay. that move. Uh, let's see, so, uh, why should that name be sounding? Sure, sure. 
Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together, yours is as fair a name. Sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them, Brutus will start a spear as soon as Caesar. When went there by an age since the great flood, but there was fame before them with one man? When could they, till now, the talk to Rome, say that her wide walls encompassed but one man? But you and I have heard our fathers say, there was a Brutus once, or to brook the eternal devil keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. Okay, good, good. Okay, does that, make, does that make sense to you? I mean, that, that's, that's a lot more, there's a lot more at work now. There's a lot more dynamics, but I think that's really useful for you. I think that having the idea that, you know, that when Caesar becomes foremost in your thoughts, there is, there's tremendous anger sure. in, involved in that, but, and that has to be managed along with the fact that you cannot be too strident with this guy. He's a man of intellect. He must be appealed to on his terms. So you've kind of got to be going back and forth between those scenes, which will make it, you know, like it. that much more interesting. Okay, cool. cool. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Great. Who's next? Go. Oh, that's right. Okay, all right, good. Good, good, good. Okay, all right. This, this gives me an opportunity to introduce a concept that I, I'm, I'm guessing many of you have heard called the moment before. Particularly important for solo performance, right? We always have to bring a context. What is happening that caused this communication to spring into being? What happened? What, what is going on? And, and here's a piece where we've got three different points of focus. Right, we've got we've got a king and two other lords in the space. What just happened that makes this speech occur? Uh, uh, they all swore off women at the beginning of play. Then they all met women, and Barone has decided nobody else is going to say anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and convince them it's okay to go back to women. Okay, I'm going to tweak that. I'm going to tweak that because he's doing this by popular demand. The reason he speaks this speech is because these four lords signed a contract. The contract says for the next three years, we're gonna study like hell, we're gonna fast most of the time, and no girls, okay? And three of them went ahead and signed, and Baroon's the one who said, you gotta be kidding me, right? But ultimately, he signs, peer pressure or whatever, but he says, 
I, I won't be the first one that breaks this contract. And they all do. They all do. Well, what happens in this bit is that they realize they're screwed. They're all now head over heels in love with the, the Princess of France and her three attendants. And they know that Baroon is the smartest of them. And they say to him, Baroon, talk us out of it. That's the moment before. So I think your moment of neutrality here, when you start into it, what's your first line? How about you? That's a combat term. That's, that's sword drawn. It's like, oh, you throw down the gauntlet? Watch me now. Watch how I do this. What's the nature of this speech? What's the nature of the reasoning, would you say? The nature. It's, I, OK, I don't want to play hide the ball. It's, it's very legalistic. Oh, yeah. Right? So, OK, but it's like, it's like you think that this is beyond me. <laughs> I got this, guys. I've got this. And at the end of this speech, it's true. Saint Cupid and to the field, and they all run off to, to woo the ladies. He's talked them out of the contract. So we want that energy at the top. It's like, I got this. And then be very precise. I'm talking now about the study thing. I'm talking now about the eating thing. I'm talking now about the woman thing. OK, let's start again. Take, yeah, but pick up that gauntlet. Have I to defend affection to men at arms? Consider, you did first swear it. Fast, to study, to see no more. Flat treason. OK, set up and punchline. I love, I love the energy you came with on, consider what you swore on two. A, B, C. That was bullshit. That was impossible, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean that's, that's part of the process of this, is letting them understand how ridiculous this thing was from the get-go. Yeah. Start again. Okay. Start again. How about you have been affections men at arms? Consider what you did first swear. Fast. Flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Good. Can you pass? <laughs> Your stomachs are too young, and the abstinence engenders malice. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, yeah. And, and furthermore, furthermore, not eating is not good for you, right? right? I mean, let me finish that off. I mean, right, and then, I mean, there has to be a quality of it as as you dispense with these line items. Okay. We have to, yeah, right, yeah. right. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, just finish that one up. Flat, uh, you know, and abstinence. Can't say, can, can you pass? My stomachs are too young. And abstinence is in his mouth. And where then you did thou and study this? And that, each of you have forsworn his book. Can you still drink and pour and there on book? For when would you, my lord? Or you, or you. I found the ground. Study's excellence about the beauty of a woman's face. In women's eyes, this doctrine I derive. They are the ground. They are the books. They are the avenues from whence does spring the true Promethean fire. Okay, okay, that, okay, that's good. That's good. I'm starting to get clearer on that one. This is a more convoluted little bit of reasoning. It, okay, I mean, as I understand it, Stephen, he's saying, he's saying, you've all already kind of blown this one off. So can you still read and pour on there on look? Yeah, so, that so phrase is really it's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. But I think he's you know he's saying, what's the what's the prior line? Uh, you have all yeah, each of in that uh, swearing off women in that each of you have forsworn this book. Right. Okay. So you've all, you've already kind of breached this contract clause, so it doesn't make any sense to pretend you're still doing it that way, but wait, there's more, and, and doesn't it make better sense to... When, yeah, when you, you lords, Saul, or when would you, my lord, or you, or you, have found the ground of studies excellence without the beauty that's see that yeah that's the point that and and that's the beautiful transition into what's coming. It's like but never mind about that. Never mind that you that you that you blew off that contract clause because 
this is the true appropriate study, yeah. right? It's, it, 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 I think it's somehow it's all of a piece. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. Let's let's go on to the the, the, the final bit of reasoning. Uh, what what comes after that? The uh, true true Promethean fire. After true Promethean fire, then fools you were these women to persuade, or keeping what is sworn you will prove fools. For wisdom's sake, a word that all men love. Or for love's sake, a word that loves all men. Or for men's sake, the authors of these women. Or women's sake, by whom we men are men. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves. Okay, okay. I, I want to do the last bit one more time okay. and do it. This, do it with this in mind. <clears throat> okay. So after true Promethean fire, where do you go? Uh, then fool. Then fools you were. Yeah, okay. Fools that. Okay. I think that's. I think that's important for you because. Because you were the one. You were the one in the the very first instance who said this is a this is a bullshit document. Right, right. We don't want to sign this, believe me. Okay, you're reminding of that. Okay. Then fools you were, right? That you, you were fools to, to, to do this, yeah. or if you persevere in this ridiculous course of action, you will prove fools. Okay. You're, you guys got it wrong coming and going, but then, Stephen, what I want you to do for the, for the big wind up is let this be personal. Okay. Because now I think that having kind of you know given them the backhander, now you're saying, "Come on, guys, okay. come on." You know, you could, because you're all you're all great friends here. Yeah. Here's how here's how this all makes sense. Okay. Yeah? yeah. So let it, you know. So finish it with the unifying right. theme. Okay. True Promethean fire. There to the end. Then fools you were these women to persuade, or keeping what is for you will prove fools. For wisdom's sake, word that all men love. Or for love's sake, word that loves all men. Or for men's sake, uh, the authors of these women. Or for women's sake, by whom we men are men. Let us once lose ourselves. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves. Or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. Yeah, I, yeah. I, okay, I, I like that. I like the tone better. You can keep the you can keep the volume in. Okay. I mean, I think there should be kind of an intensity building. Sure. I think you can do both things. And, and what's the next line? What's going to happen at the conclusion of this? The, the, they're running. Away. But 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 yeah. who I mean who specifically who is actually going to respond to yeah. the Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, what, what, what act are we in here? Uh, it's the very four? last scene of Act Four. There we go. Yeah, they, this, that play has the longest Act Five in history. Yes. Okay. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Our oaths. Okay, so I think you need to you, you need to end it with the appeal because if the king doesn't buy this, it's all for naught. Yeah. So so end it with that energy because it is the king who's going to say, Saint Cupid then, and soldiers to the field. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else. We lose ourselves to keep our oaths. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, 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 and yeah, and, and, and good adjustments. But, yeah. that, that, but that's the thing. I mean, I think particularly with the way this thing has to be cut, mm -hmm. you know, it's important to make sure we've got, you know, all three contract items, and, and you, can, you can use the idea that you need to remind them of the folly of this thing and, and then get, get them off the hook. 
and let him off the hook. That's, that's you know, it's, it's quite a brilliant bit of rhetoric. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Right, go. Okay, good, good. Okay, a lot of good stuff here. Um, yeah, the piece has a nice natural build to it, which is great for you. I think there's, I think there's uh, more room to maneuver in here. Okay, um, you come, come out of your moment of neutrality with the speech. The, the beat of deciding is, it, 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 not, it's, it's not helping you. Yeah. It's not helping you. I mean, you can come in at any tone you please, and I think this was a this was a good example of that kind of you know boiling pot thing that I referred to before. It's like you know, who, who is this? This is Northumberland out here, right? I mean, God. I mean, you know, if if, if, if you could, you would, you know. But it's like, okay. I, I mean, I, I, I can I can handle this. I can talk to him. We are amazed, right? right? You can you can come in at any tone you please and then let that other shit just like kind of bubble up and out of you okay and that's great you've got that build working i think that the 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 next beat that's available for you is once you finish with um northumberland i i see the beat of you noting the the movement out in the distance errand boy errand boy messenger boy that's, that's the guy. That's the guy. Right. And I think you can find another tone for that. Uh -huh. It's like you tell, tell, your, tell your boss, right? 
you tell him this, and you can lose some of that anger. That, that, got, that got full value mm -hmm. for you. Done with you. That's the guy. You go tell him this, that, and the other. And I think that you can keep intensity in, but find a different tone. Otherwise, Chuck, I think what happens is that that, that, that anger just kind of plays too long. Yeah, yeah sure. Right. Okay, so let's find that beat. Let's find the end of the, you know, the God omnipotent business. So finish off Northumberland, play the, the moment of finding that other point of focus, and then come back at him with that, that different tone. Yeah. Make sense? Yes, no. My master, God omnipotent, is mustering in his clouds on our behalf armies of pestilence, and they shall strike your children yet unborn and unbegot, and lift your vassal hands against my head, and threat the glory of my precious crown. Tell Molly Rope, for yon me thinks she stands, that every stride he makes upon my land is dangerous treason. He is come to open the purple test. Yeah, okay. actually, actually, try, yeah, okay, so, yeah, so fi finish, finish with him, note that, let, let that, let that, you know, occasion a move, and then you barely need to refer to him from this point forward. Tell, tell Bolingbroke, for Jan, he blah, 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 yeah. I mean, let, let's, let's see what happens if you make him the, the focus from that point forward. Look, this guy's right here. Yeah. He, he's hearing you, right? You, you, don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to worry about turning him loose. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What, 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 however that thing ends, so yeah, you yeah. can... Uh, uh, yeah, no, my master, God omnipotent, is mustering in his clouds on our behalf armies of pestilence, and they shall strike your children, your unborn and unbegot, that lift your vassal hands against my head and threat the glory of my precious crown. Yeah, okay, but I, I, I want to see you notice that. That's, that's your beat, right? You, you finished with him. You're like, so you, you, you drill him with that last thing, my precious yeah, crown. Yeah. Movement, I see movement. Yeah, and then you can let that draw you a little bit. Yeah. Don't, and, and you don't, need to, don't even have to gesture back to him. Tell falling world, for young, he thinks he says that every stride he makes upon my land is dangerous treason. He is come to owe the purple testament of bleeding war, but ere the crown he looks for live in peace, 10,000 bloody crowns of mother's sons shall ill become the flower of England's face, change the complexion of her fate, pale peace to scarlet indignation, and bedew her pastor's grass with faithful English blood. Yeah, I think that's a good shape, yeah? I mean, does it, does it seem to make sense? I, I, think, I think you've given this guy all of the attention that he warrants, and then I think that noting Bolingbroke in the distance puts you in mind of the fact that I'm talking to the wrong guy. You know, but you're a messenger. You've conveyed his message to me. You tell him this, yeah. right? You're going back, so right. And I think that somewhere in the, you know, in in feeling the rage, he kind of gets his, you know, his his legs back under him again. It's like I'm I'm not in a good spot, you know, logistically. I'm 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 not as powerful as I, you know, was, but I'm still the guy. I'm, I'm still, I'm still the man. So you can, you know, you can find a way to play that last beat with that confidence. Because you know, I mean, for the Elizabethans, this is how it went. I mean, it's God above all, and then, the, then the king, because the God, because God chose you, right? That's why you're king. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you.
and Joanna Murdoch will be doing Rosalind from As You Like. <laughs> Love is merely a madness. And, and I tell you, deserves as well a dark house and a whip as madmen do. And the reason they are not so punished and cured is the lunacy is so ordinary that the whippers are in love too. And yet, I profess to curing at my council. Oh yes, I cured one. And in this manner, he was to imagine me, his love, his mistress. And I sent him every day to woo me. At which time would I, being but a, a moonish youth, <laughs> grieve, <laughs> be effeminate, changing, longing, and liking, proud. Apish for every passion, something, and for no passion, truly anything for boys and women are, for the most part, cattle of this color. What would, would now long for him, now loathe him, now entertain him, now forswear him, now weep for him, then spit at him, that I drave my suitor from his mad humor of love <laughs> to a living humor of madness, which was to forswear the full stream of the world and live in a nook, merely monastic. Hmm. And thus I cured him. And thus will I take upon me to wash your liver as clean as a sound sheep's heart. There will not be one Lots of love in it. <laughs> I, I would cure you if you would, but call me Rosalind. Then you come every day to my coat and woo me. Okay, all right, good. Okay, this is a tricky piece. And the, and the trickiness of it is that. Rosalind obviously is smitten with this guy. She's in disguise, and we know how that works. But, so we have to find a way to play the piece, bearing in mind that she's got an agenda relative to Orlando. Without, what am I, okay, what's, what am I trying to say here? Without, you can't disappear into the, you know, the, the, the description of the malady or the, the manner in which you cured it. You can't disappear into it in a way that's going to make you less persuasive to him as this is, this is why you should, you know, play this game with me. Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, I like the top. What, what's your moment before? What just happened before you, before this piece begins? Uh, it's uh, Orlando and Rosalind there in the woods, and he's, uh, she's attacked him about him being the guy that's tacking up poems. Right. Right. Okay. Jeez. Actually, let me do it this way. But, okay. Let's, I, I, so you're, you're coming out of your, your uh, moment of neutrality with the laugh. I like that. I think you can go a little bit further with that. So, but I, but I want to know more specifically what he, what he said. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Um, where are you starting with? Love is merely a madness? Okay, so for our purposes, I think that um, because you've just, you've just said to him, you, you're not in love. I know what I know what people in love look like, and you're not it, right? And then you go through that whole that long list of things that people in love look. Okay, so I think for our purposes, he says, "Fair youth, I would I could make thee believe I love." That's the that's the one. So you can let that, you know, it's like oh, you got to be kidding me. Is the is the sense of it? And then you realize, oh, he's oh he's serious. Okay, well, I can I can help. 
right? Let's, so let's start again. <laughs> Love is merely a madness. And, and I tell you, the Zerfs is what a dark house and whips all men into. And yet, the reason they are not so, so punished and cured is, is that the lunacy is so ordinary that the whippers are enough themselves. Yet I, I confess, I'm curing it by counsel. That, yes, I cure one and, and, and in, in this manner. He, he was to imagine me, his love, his, his mistress. And, and I said to him every day, to woo me, <laughs> at which time I, being but a, a moonish youth, <laughs> would breathe, uh, be effeminate, changeable, longing and liking, proud, fantastical, apish, shallow, for every passion someday, and for no passion truly, for truly anything. For, for boys and women are, for the most part, cattle of this color. Would now loathe him. Now, now, like him. Now, now, entertain him. Now, now forswear him. Okay, all right. So, I'm, I'm still getting a little bit too much of, so this is, um, we're pretending to be Ganymede. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little bit too much here of you're you're playing a little bit too much, Joanna, of this guy. This guy. I, I think you know the disguise is working. You've got an idea here. Let's see. Let's see Ganymede playing that with a little more, a little more swagger. Okay. okay. So you can you can go as far as you please with the top beat. Oh, love is a blah 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 and blah 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 blah. It's oh my. God, you're serious. Okay, I can fix this. And I've done it once before, and here's how I did it. Okay. Right? So so you'd be a little bit more self-possessed. Now I think if you come at it with that energy, you'll find certain specific moments where you can kind of give over to the emotion. And we can see you reel it back in. Sure. And that ought to be really fun. But but let's try it, let's try it this way. I cured one once and in this manner, and really stay on top of it. Be be the the capable, you know, well, I don't know what you, you know, rustic psychologist who's actually had experience in these matters, and you know, and he's over here going, well, maybe, maybe, maybe he can help. Yes, I cured one, and in this manner, he was to imagine his love. Okay, that, and that's and that's crazy talk. I mean, you, you, I think you can have some fun with that. Here, here's how I did it. I have strange methods. Okay. Uh, yes, I cured one, and, and in this manner. He was to imagine me his love <laughs> and his mistress. And I said to him every day to woo me. At which time would I, being but a, a moonish youth, <laughs> grieve you, be effeminate, change belonging, and liking, proud, fantastical, <laughs> apish, shallow, those for every passion something and for no passion anything for boys and women are, for the most part, cattle of this color. Well, we now like him, now loathe him, now entertain him, now forswear him, now weep for him, then spit him that I drave my suitor from his mad humor of love <laughs> into a living humor of madness. <laughs> Uh, which was to forswear the full stream of the world and live in a nook <laughs> here in the <laughs> And thus I hear it. And thus will I endeavor to wash your liver as clean as a sound sheep's heart. There would not be one spot of love in it. I would cure you <laughs> if you would but call me Rosalind and come every day to my coat and move. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I like that a lot better. And it, and it makes me think there are a couple of opportunities that uh, that opens up. I think that, you know, in terms of, in terms of assuming and incorporating the reaction you're getting over here, look for the moment where he goes, 
hey, this is pretty good stuff. And that's like, whoa, I can't be, no, that's, that's a little bit too much. You know, he's in my space. I'm like, ooh, yeah, so like look for that. And then you can find a whole other tone at the very end when you say, here's what I want you to do. Come and come to me every day and call me Rosalind. <laughs> and Celia's back there going, oh my God, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I mean, just, just different colors. But I think that this works is to, is to let Ganymede be, you know, a better representation of person who can help you. Okay, great, great, thank you. Yeah, come on, yeah, I saw it, I saw it. What have you I've never actually read the whole play. Which so play? I don't have a whole, um, which which one are you? Nine. Okay, go ahead. Do, do, do your thing. Let's we'll, we'll see. We'll see what okay. we got. Go ahead. I've read that play. I know how it goes. <laughs> That's terrific. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, we can work with this. We can work with this. Let's back you up a little bit. Okay, because I want you to have I want you to have more room to maneuver because look, when somebody begins a piece sitting down, what, what am I waiting for? They're going to get up at some point, right? Something's going to happen that makes it impossible for you to sit. Okay. Now let's talk about the context a little bit. Do you know what's happening in the scene? Not okay. A little bit. Okay. So Viola Viola is in disguise, right? Women in disguise in Shakespeare. It's crazy. No, nobody ever says forsooth. That's actually a woman wearing men's clothing. Zunes, they don't say that. The disguises are perfect. Okay, so you're, you're dressed up as Cesario, Viola as Cesario. You're in the employ of Orsino. He's in love with Viola. He keeps sending you to her to deliver his messages of love. And she's not into it. So Viola is the person you need to put in the space with you. That's the person you're talking to. O Olivia, you're talking to Olivia. Okay. You're Viola okay. in disguise, but you're, you're a woman, we know that, and you're talking to this other woman. And she likes you. She likes you. In fact, she, in fact, you're starting to get the idea that she likes you a little bit too much. But she says to you, here's your moment before. Like, you, you say, she, okay, she just said to you, you were rude to my servant. He was out there telling you you couldn't come in, and you were rude to him. And, and you said, well, my master, you know, is in love, and I have to deliver his message. And she says, oh, yeah, and I'm tired of it. I've heard it already. And you say, you know, I'm, I'm making this up. But she said, you say, you haven't heard it, you know, the way I say it. And Olivia gives you the opening. She goes, oh, really? What would you do if you were in love and needed to speak those words to me? What would you say? That's the setup. Okay. Okay. And, and then, so here's you saying, here's how I would profess my love for you. But the other layer of this is that Viola is already in love with Orsino. So that's the other thing that's at work here. She's imagining, in a way, what she might be able to say to him someday. 
Make sense? Yes. But 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 that's the that's the moment before. She says, "Why? What would you?" Because his love, his love messages are boring me. Give me something better. And that's where the speech tr starts. So try again. And she's the one you're talking to, at least initially. Okay, good. One more time. I'm going to do it one more time. And this time, I want you to, it's all, it's all positive. I mean, this is, what you're telling her you would do is, it's like the best possible capital R romantic manifestation of how you get somebody to understand the depth of your feeling for them. So none of it is, there's no furrowed brow here. She's giving you a great opportunity, right? So, you know, so she, she says, why, you know, how would you say it? And you, kind of, and you kind of light up, and it just gets better and better with each image. Build it that way. Which means what? How, what do you understand that to mean? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm staying put. You're not going to be able to move me, and I'm staying right next to you until you get the message, right? I, I don't take no for an answer. Okay. Make me a little cabin after the game. Call upon my soul in the house. Break the royal cantons of contented love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Pollute her name to the reverberant hills and make the battling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. That's good. Does that feel different? Yeah, that's that's that is that's got a useful shape to it. Now it's actually got a build, and now it makes sense to me that after like building the first two seated, now you're kind of getting swept up in it, you know. Um, and let the bab what's what's that line about the babbling whatever it is? The out, cry out, you know, and then make that sound, make her name, just the most romantic sound you can make, yeah? Okay, great, great, good, thanks, yeah, great. Good stuff. Okay, good, 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 good. Can I, can I share a quick story? I played Casca. I played Casca once, and when I said that line, it was it was it was Greek to me. It, it's like clockwork. There would be about a, a a second pause in the audience, then they'd start laughing. It's like they would go, "I've heard that somewhere before." Oh, that's where it comes from. Oh, that's funny. Okay, all right. Ta who who are you talking to over here? Put him down here. 
put them out here because you're, 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 see, when you, when you play too much that way, that's where you're sending my attention. Put him here so I can see you working on him. So have you decided that Brutus is here and Cassius is there? Okay, fine. That's fine. Now, now, now tell me, oh, don't worry about that. Um, um, yeah, let me see, yeah, audition, completely different beast. Uh, so what do, what do we think of this guy, Casco? What's his deal? What's his deal? Describe him. Give me a couple of adjectives for this guy. Uh, he is a little bit angered. Um, he's an angry guy. He's itching. He seems he's, like he's just itching for he's, something he's, that's bothered by stuff. He's, 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 he's yeah. bothered. He's, yeah. he's sour. Yeah. He's a sour yeah. dude. And he hates, and he hates bullshit, and he yeah. hates common people. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, so, like, he, it's like there's always some bad aroma in his midst. He's yeah. just, he's just sour. So, now they need information. That's why they've stopped him, right? As you're, because you're on your way, yeah. you're, you're heading on out. And they say pluck Casca by the sleeve, right? Because he, he was in the, the stadium there. Brutus and, and Cassius have been outside here listening to the cheers. They don't know what's going on. Here's the guy with the information. Okay, when, when uh, Casca says that Caesar put it by, specifically, physically, what was he doing? I mean, be, I mean either one will work, but I think we can see that. I think we can see that. So Antony is saying, Caesar, take the crown. And he said, no, I shan't, right? Okay, um, okay, let's start again. Let's start again. Yeah, yeah, keep, yeah, keep them more forward so I can see you as you're working on them. Okay, that, now that's an opportunity for you. So here's what Caesar did. And I'm already, I already have an opinion about that. But every time he did it, those people, that's different. That's different. So here's an opportunity for you to, to demonstrate for us what you think about the common people. Okay, this is, this is better. Um, now, I, I think we need to get this guy into the conversation sooner. So let's, let's start where you're starting. Start the piece again, and, then, and let me give you a suggestion. I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt you when I think it's time to turn your attention to the other guy. Go ahead and start with him. I, Mary, the crown was offered Caesar thrice, and he put it by thrice, every time gentler than other, and at every putting by my honest neighbor's shouted. But to my yeah, yeah, okay, it's there, it's there. But to my thinking, talk to this guy. It's like, right, right, but, but if you want to know how I thought, think about it, I, I think it's important for us, Akia, to know right off the bat that we got two guys, two guys in the space. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you can kind of come over here and be confidential with Cassius. I think that as you go deeper into the speech, you would want to consider the, the, the different relationships that you probably have with both of these guys. But that seems like a useful moment to make an adjustment. Okay, try it. Okay. I, Mary, the crown was offered Caesar thrice, and he put it by thrice every time gentler than other, and at every putting by my honest neighbor shouted. Yeah, you hate them. You hate those people. Oh my God. My. But, to my thinking, he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. And still, as he refused it, the rabble men hooted and clapped their chapped hands and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown. But there's no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their mothers, they'd have done no less. Cicero spoke Greek, and to what effect? Nay, and I tell you that on their look you in the face again. But those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for my own part, it was Greek to me. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think that I think that the it, the, it, the beat that begins with the introduction of Cicero, I think that at that point maybe you turn them both loose. You know, maybe the maybe the the bridge there is. Let's see what and what happened next. What happened next? So you can probably you can probably like leave both of them, take a little move, and oh, oh yes, yeah, Cicero spoke Greek, and I don't know what he was talking about. Some people pretend to understand him, but for me, right? I mean, it's such a good ending. Put yourself in a good strong position to finish it up. Yeah. So here's what I would say: is that's a better shape. Is is getting both guys into the space a little bit sooner, and find the opportunities to light up. Casca's utter disdain for those people. Every time he talks about them, it should have a different tone of, of sourness behind it, okay? okay? Okay, great, great, good, thank you. <laughs> Who have we not seen? Anybody else? Anybody else want to play? Go. Oh, yeah, I want to see this speech. I love this speech. Hello. Hello. Oh, pardon me, the leading piece of earth. And with a monarch's voice cry, Let slip the dogs of war. This foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial. Okay, good. Okay, um, moment before is, I mean, th th you know, this is probably the, the greatest of all moments before. Um, you've just, okay, well you came in, you saw what had happened, you reckoned that it was at least a, a coin toss whether they were gonna kill you. Right. Um, Cass Cassius was in favor. <laughs> Brutus, not so much. You shook hands with all of them. They're, they're like up to their elbows in gore, and you shook their hands, so you got that going on. Okay, but, and now you are alone. And now you are alone. I'm a little, I was a little perplexed by starting here, because the, the bleeding piece of earth is here. Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, I think, I think that what, whatever you want to do, if you want to find something there and then come back, maybe it's hard to look at. I don't know, but I think that by the time you address it, 
that, that needs to be your focus. And it's a tricky piece because you're dealing with corpse on floor, so we, you know, we, don't, want, we don't want you down there right. for too long. Okay. Um, Butchers is a good find. I mean, butchers is such a great percussive word that it, wa it is like the first little mini climax in the speech. Livid, that's good, that's right. And, and we want some, two syllables there. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Okay, beat. Over thy wounds is something different. Okay. Over thy wounds do I. Okay, when, once you start into the curse, I mean, I, th I think that that's where, that's where the, the inexorable build begins. I don't, I don't know that you got an opportunity to vent steam off it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah? I think I, think I know. Okay, like like you you did it with with mothers and babies and quartered. I I think try it this time through. Let's start there. Let's start with, oh, you know, a, a curse shall light upon the limbs of men, okay. and let's see how we get from that to to the end. You cut out Ate. Ate by his side come hot from hell. I didn't cut it out. Oh, okay, all right. Well, okay, all right. That's that's it. <laughs> Um, it's, I don't know where that goes. Okay, okay. yeah, it's all right. If Caesar's spirit ranging for revenge with Ate by his side, come hot from hell. Um, but, 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 yeah. So, keep, keep, because I think he, I think he's finding it. He, you know, it has to be in the moment. Yes. Okay. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling something coming on. I'm having a premonition, and I think that as these images occur, it's just worse and horrible, or, and more and more and ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, uh, Rah, okay. Right? So rather than, because the, you know, like embodying the sweetness of motherhood in order to set up the grisliness, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to let some of the, the steam out. Sure. Okay, let's try it from over thy wounds. No, let's uh, just go from a curse shall light upon the limbs of men. So okay. you've now decided. Yeah. To, to prophesy. So I think that I think that that's good. That's good. I I think that if you can find a, a a climax of sorts on let's slip the dogs of war, and then maybe maybe there's a, a, a last reference because that this right. This so, so I think what I think what will work for you is you know. I th over thy wounds I prophesy blah 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 the voice and utterance of my tongue. Take a beat there. You can take the time, and I, I, I should see you seeing it out there, right? I, I see it. I see how it's going to go. Blood and destruction, and somewhere in there is the, is the necessity to, to get up and to, and to see it more clearly, and maybe, maybe it draws you a little bit. It moves, and it's like blah, blah, blah. And then, and then the, the, the little coda there, the little denouement, is that is that last thing that this right that's what they have set in motion this foul deed yeah 
Uh, so I don't, I don't know that it wants that same level of growl and force. It, it might, it the might. Part of yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, groaning is great. Grim, you can extend that vowel as long as you please. Groaning. That's what it's going to sound like out there. It's going to be a whole country full of the orange cricket flash of pain. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah, yeah. But that, but that's it. I, th I think that once, once the the prophecy begins, just, just take the up escalator. You know, it just gets, it gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Great, thanks. Thank yeah, I saw, I once attended a workshop with an actor who at the time was one of the, the stalwarts of the Royal Shakespeare Company. His name was Charles Keating. And in this workshop, he, he performed this piece. And he, uh, I mean, it, it was just insane. And at the end of it, he finished it, and he goes, you, you see, I still haven't got it right. I still haven't got it right. I should do that last bit all on one breath. If I get it right, it'd scare the hell out of you. And we're all out there going, oh, yeah, 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 it's, it's crazy stuff. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else who has not yet performed it wants to? Okay, let me see whether, are there any questions, any questions about um, the, the process or what you're, what we're trying to accomplish here, or anything that you saw that was confusing that I can maybe clean up a little bit. I'd like to hear your thoughts on, on choice of piece. Yeah. Okay. Again, you know, you're here. Here's what I was <laughs> brought up with. And it, it, different time, different time. Um, I think that. I, you know what, it, 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 Chuck, it has so much to do with context. What are you auditioning for? What shows are they auditioning? Um, but I think that if you're, if you're asked to perform, say, two contrasting monologues, I think one of those monologues should be a piece that is exactly where you are right now. This is a piece that you could feel, sir or madam, confident to let me play right now today. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of where I am. And then, you know, if you want to go out into left field for the, the contrasting piece, have at it. But I, I think that's important, do you know? I mean, if, if you come in and, you know, you give me Lear out in the storm, I might applaud your, your ingenuity, you know, and it will certainly tell me something about how you perform text analysis, but it doesn't tell me a lot about you know your your cast abilities. That makes sense. Yeah. So and I and I don't want to I don't want to say this in a way that sounds like I'm being you know too stodgy and and restrictive. You know you should play the the material that shows you off to best advantage. But you know again context. What are you auditioning for? If you're auditioning for a, a rep company. You know, okay, well, you know, then you probably have the opportunity to show them one piece that's a little more straightforward in that regard, and one piece that, look at my range. Look at, look at me do this. By and large, you know, I mean, find, find pieces that, that speak to you. Find pieces that, you know, that you feel as though I get, I get what that's about, you know. I'm a big fan of getting off the beaten path. I'm a big fan of getting off the beaten path, you know. Um, they're, they're, you know, you've all heard that there are certain pieces that you shouldn't do. I, uh, um, yeah, another personal anecdote. I attended an audition once, and I got there early. And they, they, when I checked in, they said, "Well, you know, we're, we're running ahead of schedule or whatever, so you'll you'll be next." Is that okay? I said, "Yeah, I'm ready." So I, I went down the hall. And this was an audition for what they were at the time calling, I think, the Los Angeles Shakespeare Festival. And the guy who was in the audition room ahead of me, so the guy that I was waiting for to finish, was he was doing To Be or Not To Be, which is on the list. And, and he was doing it. He was wearing like, you know, like a, like a frilly Hamlet shirt, you know, with like tie, and he, and he, and he had a dagger. And, and he was like, like every, after every line, he was like, like well, I mean, I can see this, because I was kind of looking through the crack in the double doors. And he was, you know, kind of walking around. I mean, it was, 
it was like all the things you shouldn't do. And it, 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 initially I was kind of embarrassed for him, but then I figured, what a great act to follow, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, th the thing is that any, any play of Shakespeare's that you bust open has useful monologue material if you take the time to look and gets my attention. I can tell you that. Gets my attention when somebody gets a little bit off the beaten track, you know, because you, you don't need much. You know, witness my Antonio piece. I mean, nobody no, nobody is going to confuse Antonio with a major character from Twelfth Night, but I didn't need that. I just needed, you know, like 15, 20 lines of good material. And I, I guarantee you they weren't seeing a whole lot of actors playing that. In the context of classical pieces, I would say if you're going to, you know, for example, your, your Rosalind piece is a, is a prose piece. So, I mean, you would want to have the verse piece in your back pocket as well if you were going to be showing contrasting monologues because that's important. You know, if you're auditioning for, you know, for classical material, we need to know how you deal with that. Then that, that kind of answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, uh, the, la the last thing I will say, my last note to me here is uh, the end. The end's the end. The end's the end. Expect nothing. Expect nothing. Finish the scene, thank you, and prepare to go. If they want something else, you won't get very far. But don't expect it. Yeah? I'm a, yeah, I, see, I, I'm a big fan. When I audition, if I'm sitting at a table like this, there will generally be a chair at the table. And when actors come into the room, I will invite them to sit with me for a couple of moments. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, de-stress the environment. So I want to chat with them. I'll sit there and I'll say, oh, you did, you did such and so play. How'd that go for you? You know, what was that like? <laughs> or and it's, this has happened. Or, oh, you, you were in this play with this director? Well, I know him. And, and he never mentioned you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's a relatively small community, those of us who do classical theater. Word gets around. Um, yeah, but I like to sit with actors for a while, you know, and then, and then you know, everyone feels a little bit more at ease, and then now go, now go up and, and show me your stuff. I had a dude one time, he sat down, and I was talking with him, and all of a sudden he says, you know, I used to be a fireman. And I was blah, 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 and I'm going, what the hell? I did, you know, and, and I realized this is his monologue. And I said, stop. I said, stop, stop, no, 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 no. See, because when we, when we perform this play, you won't be sitting two feet away from the audience. Please stand up and go over there. I have to know whether you can, you know, whether you have enough voice to, this is the craziest thing. He thought he was gonna play his monologue sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, any other, any other general questions? I think that, you know, I. My observation, based on the, the work that we just saw, and thank you to everybody who went up there and, and showed a piece, okay, that's great. My overarching observation here is we can all stand to be a little bit more, a little uh, more focused on the beats. It's never one thing, it shouldn't be. If, it, if you find that it's all kind of sounding like one thing, drill down into the piece a little bit or find a different piece. Because we want the beats, we want to see the journey we want to see, you know, the start, the development of the thought, and the conclusion. That's available for you. Doesn't take all that long to do, but that's what we're looking for, and that's what I'm referring to as beats. Where, you know, we we've completed this. Now this comes in. Now we have to deal with that, and then we go to this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yay.